Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a different kind of for loop, which is known as a for each loop. And this is going to allow us to loop through the elements of a list or a collection data type and do something with those elements. I'm also going to be showing you ways that we can break out of the loop at certain points. So if the condition is not met, uh, or like we just want to get out of the loop the way that we can do that. And I'm going to be showing you some common examples of where we use loops. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see that I have two uh, arrays here. One's named names and one is named AR. I just added this names one. It's just a blank, uh, blank array for right now, okay? So what I first wanna do is in the last video, I looped through this array. And the way I did that was by having a variable I. We waited until it was, uh, what do you call it? Greater than the length of the list. And then once it was, we simply broke out of that uh, uh, that loop, right? Okay, so a easier way to do this is to do something like this. So we're going to have the same exact syntax, except in these brackets, something is going to be different. Okay, what I'm going to do if I want to loop through every element in this list is I can do something like this, I can say for element colon, ARR. Now what this is actually going to do, I have to to do this, sorry, string element, or I can't say string because that's not the right type int element in our array. So what I'm doing now is I'm saying that every time we loop through this uh, loop, right, what we're going to do is we're going to declare a new variable called element, and it is going to be equal to the next element in our uh, array. So in this case, when we first loop element is going to be equal to one, and then elements going to be equal to five, and then it's going to be equal to seven, and then three, and then four, and then five. And this is a way easier way if I wanted to like print out the element, or look at certain elements uh, to do so rather than having to have like a counter variable I and then index all of the different elements, especially if we don't know the length of the array, or we don't want to do dot length, because this is automatically going to go from start to end. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to show you because Obviously, we need an example to really understand this, but the first example I typically like to do is just printing out all of these elements uh, to show you that it is indeed working. So in this case, we'll just say element, okay? And we'll just print this to the screen and see what we get. So in this case, you see we get one, five, seven, three, four, five. So right, starting at the beginning, going to the end, the way this works with the colon is again, we're just grabbing the elements in order and we're using those as a variable element. Now, a lot of times what you want to do with this is um, you want to be checking the element, but you also want the index as well. So you want the element and you want the index. Now we could use what we used in the last video where we just have a counter variable and that way we have the index and the element because we can do like ARR of one, like all that, okay, or of I. Um, but a way that people typically do this is with like an outside counter variable that you increment yourself. So I'll show you how this works. So what we're gonna start off by doing is just creating a variable that's called int count equals zero. And then within this loop, we're gonna increment count ourselves. So now, every time that we run the loop, we're adding one to count so that count is keeping track of the index of the element. So if I print out the element plus, we'll do this, I guess I can't do that, plus a space, plus uh, our count, you can see that this is keeping track of the index. So what's happening here is it says one is at index zero, five index one, and it keeps track of all of these different indexes for us. And that's a really easy way to do that. I just wanted to show you, it doesn't really make sense for this example case, but I just wanted to show you because there will be situations where you want both the element and the uh, index, and it's easier to get the element just by doing this with this colon, okay? So again, when you're doing a for each, this is what this is known as, because it's going through for each element in the array, we are doing something, okay? All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I wanna show you how we can populate an array using a uh, for loop. So right here, for example, we have a, uh, what do you call it, a new string array that's empty, right? Like all these elements are null, and we want to populate them. So the way that we would go about doing this, and this is a common example of what you wanna do, this why I'm showing you this, is we create a variable, we're gonna say again, int, i equals zero we'll say well i is less than and then names dot length right and then we'll do a semicolon and we'll simply add one to i so this is the exact same thing as we've done before um, but i'm just going to show you how we can actually add the elements because it's a really common use case so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to use the scanner to get a uh, new variable or to get like a name from the user so i'm just going to say scanner sc equals uh, new 
scanner and then we need system dot in okay and I actually think I should probably not declare this every loop but put it up here because we're just going to use the scanner right so we'll say string uh, of input equals sc dot next line like this and this way every time we run the loop we are going to get uh, input from the user and you know what let's also just print out here system dot out print ln and just tell the user uh, we want actually we'll just do print not ln we'll say input like this so that way they know what to type in okay so input we're getting input and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the user's input into our array so how can I do this well this is really easy I can just do names I is equal to input right so we're just declaring that whatever um, index we are in the loop right now so whatever value of I well that value in the list or sorry the list I keep calling it list it's an array I'm just used to Python is going to be equal to whatever we typed in and then if we want to print out the entire array uh, what we can do is we'll use another for loop so we'll just say for and then this time it's going to be a for each loop right so we'll say for and just to stand for name uh, I need string and and names okay then we'll simply just do system dot out dot print ln and we will print every value of n okay so that's two good examples let's run this and just make sure everything's working so we run this input I'm just gonna type hello oh, I guess it wanted names didn't it Tim uh, Bob Joe Bill and then there we go so we ran that five times and we get hello Tim Bob Joe and Bill awesome there we go so that uh gives us all the values that we need okay okay so now what i want to show you guys is how we can break out of the loop so if we're in the loop and we're going through and we're doing operations and we've not yet met the condition where or like so the loop is going to keep going like i is not greater than whatever value or, or whatnot okay then we want to break out of it how can we do that so how can we just get out of it in the middle of looping well, there is this magical little keyword called break. And what this does is whenever this is encountered inside of a loop, it simply breaks out of the loop. So in this case, what would happen is since I have break at the end, we would do these first three lines, and then we just break. And this would only happen one time, no matter what, no matter what any of this stuff said, this loop would only happen once. Now, I'm gonna show you just down here in this loop how we can break out based on like a certain condition so for example say we encounter the word n um or what do you call it the word tim what am i saying n i was just reading that if we encounter like the word tim while we're reading through the list of names then we just want to break out like we don't want to print any more names anymore we just want to break out so the way that i can do this is I, now i can say well we're gonna we're gonna print tim but we'll break after tim okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a little if statement i'm gonna say if n equals equals or not equals equals dot equals okay and in this case, we'll just simply put Tim in here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to break. And in this case, now, whenever we encounter Tim, we are simply breaking out of the loop, and that means we will uh, not print the rest of the names. So if I run this, just drag this console up here, uh, and we run, and we say hello, and we say name, and then we say Tim, and I'll just show you this Tim and Tim. And I run this here, you see we get hello, name, and Tim, and these other two Tims do not print. And again, that's because once we hit Tim and N is equal to Tim, we simply break, okay? And we get out of the loop. And that's like a really easy way to just break out of the loop. And this is gonna work for while loops that we do uh, in, what do you call it, the next video. Now, typically break is not something you wanna be using a lot. Like you only use this if you really have to. Um, it's better to just make these conditions work the way they should uh, and have the loop run like as many times as it needs to run you know what I mean uh, so just try not to use this too much but I mean there's nothing really wrong with using it people just are frown upon it in the programming world using the word break okay so anyways that's been it for this video in the next video we're gonna talk about while loops which is very similar to for loops but they just work in a little bit of a different way again if you enjoyed the video please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one